Star Wars 7x7 episode 2952. We're going to continue our series of looks at the Andor trailers, plural, by collecting what we've learned about Luthen Rail, the character played by Stellan Skarsgård, as a result of those two trailers and a couple other things that are kicking around out there, and also using hair once again as an indicator of what might be going on at certain points. Punch it! <laughs> Hey Rebel Rouser, I'm Alan Voivod and this is Star Wars 7x7, your daily dose of Star Wars joy and thank you so much for joining me for it. So Luthen Rail, as played by Selen Skarsgård, appears to be recruiting people for a fight against the Empire. That much we know for sure because we see him recruiting Cassie and Andor, we see him having a meeting with Saw Gerrera. But if we go by the idea that we talked about in yesterday's episode, which is that these first three episodes of the Cassian Andor series may be the ones we are seeing predominantly in the trailers because they like to show the earlier stuff first in these things. And considering that we see kind of different time periods in Cassian's life before we get to see him meet up with Luthen for the first time, it looks like we're actually seeing Luthen in multiple time periods as well. And the key to that is his hair. So when we see him meeting with Mon Mothma when she arrives at what seems to be his residence, he has longer, wavier hair. And then when he meets up with Cassian and with Sagarera, he has much shorter, close cut hair. Now, obviously, these things can change from day to day, and my son's getting a haircut today, so his is changing, like, right today. And, yeah, that's a possibility, but probably not what's happening here in Andor. As for his dialogue and getting an idea of where he is in his timeline journey based on the dialogue, well, it's not always clear because some of that happens in voiceover, and obviously that could be applied to any part of the visuals we're seeing, so it doesn't necessarily mean that it aligns with the same time frame. For example, the line that we hear where he says, I need all the heroes I can get, that's not delivered over people interacting. It's a ship flying over the surface of a planet. So yeah, who knows when that is, but it definitely kind of has the vibe of his delivery to Cassian and or his recruiting pitch to him, along with the line about, you know, the Empire is choking us so slowly we're beginning not to notice. That line also kind of feels like the sales pitch a bit as well, but it's again on voiceover, so who knows for sure. But the your slipping line that's delivered by Clea or Clea, K-L-E-Y-A, right before the moment where Mon Mothma arrives, that line and then his response saying, I'm not slipping, I've just been hiding for too long, and that happens over a <laughs> different kind of scene, but it's probably coming from that same conversation between him and Clea, right? So you can kind of put that one together, and that definitely feels like it is, you know, much earlier comparatively in the series. So in in the three episodes, it would be before he eventually recruits Cassie and Andor, but it seems like as a result of that conversation that maybe he's already thinking about rebellious stuff by the time he's meeting with Mon Mothma, or maybe it's a slipping of a different kind entirely, who knows? I think it's probably safe to bet that it's more about him slipping in terms of letting it be clear where his true loyalties lie and that they aren't with the Empire. I will say, though, that the bit about the Empire choking them so slowly that they're beginning not to notice, that's a very coruscant -y way of thinking, because when you see what happens at Fest, what is presumably Fest, Cassian's homeworld, where it looks like it's been strip mined. When you look at what's happening at Ferrix, which is the place where Cassian is recruited by Luthen, and that's where the you know mining slash scrapyard stuff is happening, right? Then <laughs> nobody is looking at that and thinking the Empire is choking them slowly in there, right? That's a very Coruscant way of thinking. But to his credit, it seems like the course of the first three episodes, the course of him going to much shorter hair, seems like his journey brings him to a point of realizing that it isn't just about what's happening in Coruscant, that there are different things happening farther away from the galactic core and it's more desperate and more dangerous. But despite that danger, as you go further away from the galactic core, there are more opportunities to generate the seeds of rebellion. And it certainly seems like Luthen is making his journey away from Coruscant and into you know those outer 
overreaches so he can help sow the seeds of rebellion. And by seeing him take on those TIE fighters and the TIE bomber and the arrester cruiser, right, he certainly seems like he's also willing to get his hands dirty in this as well. So that right there is pretty much what we have learned about Luthen Rail so far as a result of the two trailers and also a couple other little things, including a Lego set that was announced at Star Wars Celebration where we got some names of people and that planet Ferrix, right, which by the way is a brand new planet. There's a Phoenix, F-E-E-N-I-X, in Legends, but not a Ferrix. So that's a whole new situation as well. And that is going to do it for this episode of the podcast. It just remains for me to say thank you so much for joining me for it as always. And may the force be with you wherever in the world you may be. Star Wars 7x7 is not endorsed or sponsored yet by Lucasfilm Limited, Disney, or 20th Century Fox and is intended for entertainment and information purposes only. Star Wars, the Star Wars logo, all names and pictures of Star Wars characters, vehicles, and any other Star Wars related items are registered trademarks and or copyrights of Lucasfilm Limited by their respective trademark and copyright holders. May the force be with them. All original content is copyright 2021 by Star Wars 7x7. We hope you love it.